Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Pastor Mike here. Welcome to our midweek meditation as we're looking toward this first Sunday in October. Uh, yeah, it's almost October. It is uh, kind of wild how 2021 both seems very long and very short at the exact same time. But we're looking forward to some more texts from Mark and some more stuff going on there. Uh, this week gives us, in some ways, or maybe for me, uh, very much a harder gospel text. And I know I will be looking at that on Sunday. I really didn't tackle the hard one uh, this Sunday. Um, I looked a lot at, well, um, uh, the community aspect of it, not necessarily the dismembering aspect. Uh, a lot of people can uh, either explain it away or to focus on it. And again, that's the risk this Sunday, too, with texts on divorce. It's a hard topic. But oftentimes, because we're looking at that, especially in the first lesson, in the gospel lesson, we miss what's going on in the second lesson. And that's sometimes, I think, what I like to do with the midweek meditation, is that sometimes there is a, a, a reading that supports it, but there's a lot going on there that, that really shoehorning it into a sermon would do disservice both to, say, the gospel text and kind of the main theme for the week, and the actual side theme as well. And so... Um, I have a lot of thoughts on both of the themes, and so oftentimes in these videos I try to tackle one of the side ones. And the Hebrews text is very interesting. This text from Hebrews is in many ways a praise, a focus on who this person of Jesus Christ is. It is a very important Christological text, and that's a fancy pants words of saying, what does scripture tell us about the very nature of Jesus Christ? And we get one of the interesting scenarios where it brings in angels into the discussion. How he's above angels, but then was made lower than angels. It's a very fascinating piece. But besides, you know, the nuance and the rhythm of it, what's the takeaway? What's the point? What does it have to do with anything? And one of the great pieces of this is how the author of Hebrews, as he's talking about Jesus, raises up the very holiness, the powerfulness, the greatness of Jesus, and really matches it with his presence in our suffering. That is an amazing thing. We can often err one way or the other. We can, again, I believe many theologians either err to side on the humanity of Jesus, and some err too much on the divinity of Jesus. I love the passages that really do a good job of, of really giving us the image of how these are so important and linked. And this Hebrews text does it, is that it is the very holiness and divinity of Jesus that we should keep an eye on in the midst of his suffering and our suffering is that in his greatness, he chooses to do what with his greatness? His perfection and holiness. Enter into our brokenness to heal, to grow, to change, to, to make us more of what he's calling us to be. That is very important. Jesus is a God who enters into our brokenness, our broken world, our broken reality. We either sometimes are too quick to try to fix brokenness, ignore brokenness, explain it away. Often, as Christians, we are called to see Christ in it, not causing it, but entering into it for healing and to follow him there. And to know that he will also into, enter into our brokenness, our struggles, our hurting realities that we find ourselves in. He does that. It's powerful and it's important. He doesn't come in with quick fixes or easy solutions, but he comes with the healing that he knows works through the cross. And that is the great thing to remember from this text. Um, again, I'm willing to bet there are many people out there that you know or in your own situation that it is not as it ought to be. You are not happy with the situation. And the frustration can sometimes blind ourselves to the healing, the mending 
the the process our good Lord is going through to bring us back where we need to be. And I think this text is very important in, in calling us to pause and to see that. And that is my hope and a prayer for this week for uh, people in the world, that, that we know our God is amazing, great, holy above all other things. But in that greatness, chooses to be a healer. Not to choose always to be right. Not to, to do so many other things. Not to tear and rend, but to heal. And so in situations where you see the need for healing, I encourage you and call you to uh, look for the, uh, the crucified one and see how he is at work. Those are my meditations this week. That has been on my mind a little bit. Hopefully it can give you a good lens, grist for the mill for the week to come. Well, blessings, brothers and sisters in Christ. As always, if you need me, let me know. Uh, you guys are in my prayers, and I look forward to seeing you. Talk to you later now. Bye.